Hi, I want to welcome Keaton Hines to our economics interviews. Keaton is a senior research analyst at the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. I want to thank you so much for taking time to share your insight with our students. And first, I'm wondering if you can share a little bit about yourself and how you got started in economics. Of course. So again, my name is Keaton Hines. I am a senior research analyst at the El Paso branch of the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. Um, before that, I was an economist at El Paso Electric, and I also worked as a uh, in research at the Hunt Institute for Global Competitiveness at UTEP during my graduate studies. Um, during my undergrad, I studied uh, economics, and I also got my master's of science in economics at UTEP as well. And I played soccer there as well. So uh, in my free time, I coach and. Um, uh, the way I got started in economics was, uh, to be honest, in middle school and high school, I did not enjoy mathematics. I did not enjoy the hard sciences. Um, solving an equation for the sake of, you know, solving an equation to come up with this abstract result didn't do much to vote motivate me. And it wasn't until I attended my first uh, micro econ course with Dr. Timothy Roth at UTEP that he was able to really explain and teach economics in a way that I was able to understand these very abstract concepts and make them much more tangible for the real world and to finally understand those equations and these abstract numbers that we were coming to. Um, you know, they had real world implications. They had real world consequences for people. So, yeah. So would you say that, uh, at this moment when you had that aha moment with Dr. Roth, um, is that what made you decide to study economics? Absolutely. Uh, economics is such a diverse field. Um, you know, it has applications in the biomedical sciences. It has uh, political political uh, uh, consequences that has mathematic consequences. You know, I didn't even realize how much economics was involved um, in in the production and the sell of electricity when I worked at El Paso Electric, and then of course the monetary um, policy consequences. Now working at the Fed, um, it, it seems that you just can't get away from economics as as much as you want to, and I mean that in the best way possible, just because again it is such a diverse field. Yes, it is. And there's so many things you can do with economics as a base for, for your future. Um, can you highlight some of the challenges uh, that you had or that you've encountered uh, in, your, in your studies and as an economist and, and how you overcame those? Of course. So during my undergraduate at UTEP, um, I was exposed to a lot more different uh, perspectives and I was exposed to a lot more uh, resources than I had available to me maybe in, in high school. And so one of the challenges of course was, was time management um, because playing soccer or doing anything else, having a family, having a job and trying to go to school part-time or full-time, it's, it's certainly a, a time management juggle. I think the second challenge was understanding what all my resources were when I came to a barrier and making sure I used them, whether it be classmates, professors, TAs, uh, professors' office hours. I was in and out and bothering <laughs> professors all the time, asking questions, uh, but more importantly, trying to establish those relationships um, just to keep in touch. And I still keep in touch with some of those professors now uh, to today. So um, that was that was a big change for me moving from high school to, uh, to college. Okay, so as you know, El Paso Community College has a very diverse student base. Um, some of our students are early college high school, so they're still in high school. Some are military veterans. We have traditional, non-traditional students. We just have a really broad range of, of students. Um, and I'm wondering if you have any uh, any tips or advice that you can share with them so that they will continue their studies? Absolutely. So um, again, getting an education and then doing anything else, just living life is difficult. But the best, I think the best advice I was given was sort of um, an attitude perspective. 
is to take your education and your career development in your own hands because no one's going to push it along for you. You really have to empower yourself and you're ultimately responsible for, for your own de development and education. Now, of course, there's going to be barriers and challenges um, uh, that are faced. But again, the best way that I learned to overcome those was using the resources, whether it be a spouse, a partner, uh, friends, professors, classmates. I mean, in general, people want other people to succeed. Um, and so uh, again, you know, the biggest thing I, you know, I can look back on is, is leaning on classmates who were going through the same problems that I was. And, um, I really would love to encourage everyone to, to move your economics. Uh, it's such a rewarding field. Um, there's just so many different applications, even if you don't come out as, you know, with the title of an economist. I have so many classmates that are data analysts, researchers, lawyers, bankers, and then even a power and marketing analyst that um, just economics opens so many doorways for you. Kim, thank you so much for sharing your words of wisdom with us. I'm sure uh, our students are going to really appreciate what you have to say. And I really like your perspective of reaching out to those around you for help and assistance. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you, Cynthia. And it was very nice meeting you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. You too.